Barbara's here to see Paul. Oh, of course. Um, come on in, Barbara. Morning. 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 I just wanted to get a hug from my son before he goes to court today. Oh, that's much better. Much better. Mm. I can't believe that today is finally the last day. Mm -hmm. Just Andy's testimony and then the uh, closing statements, or whatever they call those. Summations. They're called summations. And I think after what John and Lisa had to say yesterday, the jury can finally see her father for who he really was. And you had no choice, Paul. Yeah. You saved Emily's life. You know who I see in that courtroom? I see a very strong and a very brave man. I do. And as soon as this thing's over, we're going to be off to a new life, kiddo. I hope so. I know so. Thanks for the boost, Mom. <laughs> I'll okay. see you in the courtroom. Barbara. Mm -hmm. Emily? I really missed you being in the court today. Will you be there tomorrow? Under the circumstances, Paul, Emily, and I both thought it was going to be best for you if she wasn't there. And what circumstances are those, Brock? Um, Paul. You go ahead and talk. <laughs> Does he know about us, about the letters? No, Paul. That's our secret. Emily, will you please trust me? Well, sure, if you think it'll help, I'll try again. Yeah, I do. I really do. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Well, you're awfully quiet this morning. You want to talk about it? I'm just thinking about everything that's happened in my life. The good and the bad. I'm realizing that what happens in that courtroom today is going to change my life forever. And that's a really weird feeling. Tell me what I can do to make you relax, huh? Nothing. Not today. Listen, maybe you just shouldn't be at work. Oh, no. If I stayed at my grandmother's, I'd go out of my mind. I know Paul thinks I deserted him. No, Paul is going to be so wrapped up in his last day of the trial, he's not even going to notice that you're not there. Brock, he's still in love with me. I have you to turn to. Paul doesn't have anybody. He's still hanging on to the memories of the one night we spent together. But hey, it was just one night. Come on. But it was more than that to Paul. I wish he didn't have to go away right now. So don't I, but the sooner I go on my Florida vacation, the sooner you and I will be able to be together permanently, all right? And when I get back, we're going to spend lots of time planning our marriage. Oh, baby, come on. What is it? I don't know. I just have this horrible feeling of dread. Okay, that's natural. It's the last day of the trial. But you remember what Jess said last night? She was very optimistic. So let's hang on to that, all right? Okay. I thought I wouldn't be nervous after being in yesterday, but it's almost worse. Oh, you're going to be terrific. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to be right there rooting for you. I'm glad. No. Thank you. No. Oh, hi, boy. I'm glad you're here. Who are you calling? I'm trying to get a hold of Hank. Jessica really wants him to, caught to fly in and testify. Oh. Uh, okay, well, give him my best if you talk to him. I'll just wait inside for you. Okay? Yes, 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 operator. Yes, I would. Would you please tell him that Barbara Ryan called and ask him to call Jessica Griffin's office as soon as possible. They'll explain why. Yes, thank you very much. 
fought with and killed James. You did. You turned him against his father with all those lies. You made him pull that trigger. You are a sick, pathetic woman, and your son was a psychopathic killer. I just wish I had told Paul sooner. Women like you betrayed James. And now you're betraying his son, you and Emily Stewart. As I told Paul last night, she set the whole thing up. She planned for him to kill his father. She, you are the one who pulled that trigger. Now you're going to lose your son. Oh, my guy lost She'll find out how it feels. As the world turns. Morning. Hi. Did you get your grandmother off to Atlanta? Yes, I did. And she has a very long list of things for you to check up on while she's away. Yeah, probably a few things to repair, too. Uh, but, uh, that's no problem. It's good she's getting to see her husband, huh? Yeah. Listen, is your sister Courtney coming up for uh, Thanksgiving? No, no, no. She called me last night, said she's going to spend Thanksgiving out in Long Island with some friends. So. What about you? I don't know. Wrangle an invitation to someone's Thanksgiving feast, but... Um, Maybe I'll cook my own bird. I'm not going to a restaurant, that's for sure. Well, Brock's going to be away. Why don't you join my mother and me? Do you mind? I might not be in here myself, but no, I don't mind. Well, um, thanks. I I I'm in. I'll, I'll carve. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, we were just trying to figure that out ourselves. <laughs> You're going to be at the courthouse. Well, I'm not being called today, so... Jessica doesn't want to put you on the stand. Why not? Well, she doesn't like what Benedict did to me when I was his witness, so she doesn't want me to be cross-examined. <sighs> I can't believe the prosecutor at the Gall suggested you and Paul were getting it on, you know? That's <laughs> disgusting. Why don't we talk Noise. about something else? Can we... Yeah, um, listen, I gotta go to the hotel anyways and pack. I will be back to see you before I leave. Okay. okay. You leaving? Yeah, I'm going on a little trip, uh... With Marjorie and the kids, I think I mentioned something to you about that. Listen, what you're doing for Paul is the right thing. Remember that. Okay. If I don't see you all before the uh, holidays, have a good one. Do my best to your family. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Brian. See you, Careful, Sean. all right? Bye. Standing there like a vulture, like a bad omen. Forget omens, hon. Our legal system runs on facts. And I think things look a lot better for Paul now, thanks to Lisa and John. Yeah, I, I missed Lisa's testimony, but I did think John was terrific. Yes, you know? he was, and I owe him a great deal for that. But then Jessica tells me that Hank has to be here to testify. What am I supposed to think? Oh, nice. Good morning, darling. How are my grandchildren? Well, Leanne's still on campus. The last class is for the holidays, you know. Adam's over at Lyle's with Bryant and Kate. <laughs> yeah, they're running Maryland ragged, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, and Mama's leaving town tomorrow. She's going up to Boston to be with thanks, uh, to spend Thanksgiving with Casey and the Paredes. How is Casey? Well, he's about the same, I'm afraid. Right. His recovery is not going that well. Well, I'll be glad when this is over. So will I. It's all Jessica's ball game now. And Jessica is brilliant. I just wish Benedict wasn't so good at raising doubts. Well, I can't believe any jury would convict Paul, knowing what kind of man Stenbeck was, and knowing that Paul was just trying to save Emily's life. Maybe you should go over there and sit with your mom. Where? Come on, I want to be with my girl. I just wish they'd get started, you know? Andy, you always say the right things. And you're going to say the right things when you get on the stand, too. So Thanks. just relax. Julie, the thing is that, that you can only answer the questions that they ask you. I mean, if they just let me talk, it'd be fine. She betrayed your father, Paul. She'll betray you, too. Mark my words. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Let the record show that all jurors are present. The bailiff will read the information to the jury. People of the state of Illinois versus Paul Stenbeck, defendant. Information number 20963, 
17th day of November in the year of our Lord, 1989. Thank you. Mr. Driven, you may call your next witness. The defense calls Andrew Dixon. No, Alice, just... Uh, I see. Well, I thought the trial would take much longer. All right, well, uh, tell Jessica that I called, and I'll be in touch with her as soon as I get back to Oakdale. Thanks. Cheers. What did Jess's secretary say? She said to give my buddy Bright a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> what did she really say? Well, she said that uh, Paul's trial might wind up today. Oh, now, Jess would have called you if she needed you. Well, I know, but I just hate to think that I had testimony that could have helped Paul, and I wasn't there to give it. Well, think of it this way. We'll be back for his celebration of his acquittal. All right. Are you sorry to be leaving Venice so soon? Mm, mm, yes, part of me would love to keep gallivanting all over Europe, going from one romantic place to another. But the more practical side of me wants to get back to our roost and our normal routine. Oh, I don't think you and I will ever have what people call a normal routine. <laughs> Do you? We never have so far. Oh, well, I better pack. I mean, guess oh. what I'm going to travel in, or I'll find that I've packed it in the bottom of my... Uh, I'll do the same. All right. All right. Oh, and one thing I know I'm going to do is wear that wonderful brooch you sent me. Duncan. What? I put the brooch in this box last night, didn't I? I don't know, Les. Oh, my... Yes, I know I did. I put it in the box. Duncan, the brooch is gone! Oh, no, Shannon. You probably just misplaced it. No, I it's know somewhere. I put it in this box because the, the, the name of the little shop is on the box. I was tough that if we ran into Leslie Dexter again that I would tell him about it. Dexter! Of course. I told you I had an odd feeling when I woke up this morning. Oh, Duncan, but we haven't left... Oh, oh. Of course! The lock's been forced! Oh, my God. I told you, you've heard of cat burglars before. That's why he came up to us in the bar. That's why he wove that fantastic story so he could get a closer look at the brooch. Of course, and he was right down here when we came in last night. You should have let me call security. I'm calling them right now, and then I'm calling the Venice police. Slee. Hello. I think perhaps I should apologize and explain. Hey, I was just thinking about you. Yeah, I had a minute alone, and I wanted to call you. I missed you. Well, I kind of missed you, too. So, you getting any work done? No, I can't concentrate. I told you so. I know. I want you to do me a big favor. You name it. I'd like to get a message to Paul at the courthouse. Oh, baby, come on. Look, I want him to understand why I'm not there. I know you can explain it to him. Listen, I think I'm probably the last person in the world Paul wants to see right now, and you know why. And you also have to be understanding and very gentle, and I think that's all it would take. If it really means that much to you, I'll do it, but, uh... Paul is very important to me, Brock. I want him to know how much I care, and I want him to know that he's going to be a very important part of our lives. Maybe then he won't feel so cut off. Okay, I'll go over there and see if I can catch him alone so that we can talk privately, and uh, I'll do it. Thanks. I love you. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Yes, operator, go ahead. Put that call through. Hi. I just wanted to double-check our plans. Is it safe to talk? Uh, well, the phone's not tapped, if that's what you mean. As far as the plans go, everything's just like I said. I'm going to fly out of Oakdale and meet you and the kids at O'Hare. And uh, we'll jump a jet down to Miami and then get over to Santo Domingo. I just keep thinking that Philip will find some way to stop us at the last oh, minute. Geez. Papa's out at Lake Forest, and he's going to be there till Thanksgiving's over. You know, he's got to do his annual nice old Mr. Lombard routine with the shelters and the hospitals and all of that. I hope so. Well, listen, I just want you to make it to O'Hare with the kids, and remember that when we get back from this, you're going to be free. Okay. See you at O'Hare. Mama, Mama, Grandpa's here. Hello, Marjorie. 
You ready for some Florida sunshine? Paul suffered a lot from his father throughout his life, but I think the worst was in New York City last spring. Would you tell the court in your own words what happened last spring? Paul was really tense, really on edge, like he always was when his father was in touch with him. But he didn't tell anybody that he'd heard from his dad. And then he went to see his father at this heliport on the river. Did Paul ever tell you why he went to the heliport? Yeah. He wanted to see his father. Not to go away with him. He wanted to see him, get things straight in his mind. He'd heard a lot about James Stenbeck being a big drug dealer. Objection. Hearsay. The witness has no proof that James Stenbeck was involved in drug traffic. Objection sustained. Andrew, would you tell the court what happened at the heliport? Paul's dad shot two people. One died, and the other, a good friend of Paul's and mine, nearly died. Paul, Paul saw the whole thing. And did you spend time with Paul during that period? Yeah, a lot. He was devastated. I mean, he finally saw through his own eyes what his father was really like. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Benedict. <clears throat> uh, now, Mr. Dixon, you said your relationship with Paul Stenbeck was very close. Yes, he was my, he was my best friend and my cousin. So you would confide in each other? Yes, sometimes. During this past summer, this is after the incident at the heliport, did you continue to see a lot of Paul Stenbeck? Not as much. Paul was working. Man, well, when you did, did you have um, occasion to discuss the girls you were dating? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. And was Paul seeing anyone on a steady basis? Not that I was aware of. Not Bianca Marquez? They were just friends. Did you feel that he might have been seeing someone and not talking about it? Objection calls for speculation on the part of the witness. Your Honor, in previous testimony, the defendant's stepfather has admitted that his stepson might have been seeing someone. Objection sustained. Did the defendant ever talk to you about Emily Stewart? Yes. Hmm? And what did he tell you? That they were good friends. That he liked working for her. And that he was learning a lot. Well, did he ever say exactly what he was learning? Objection. The question's irrelevant. Your Honor, with the court's indulgence, I believe the relevance will become very clear. Objection overruled. You may answer the question. It was just a lot about business. Did you ever ask the defendant specifically if uh, his relationship with Emily Stewart was more than professional? Objection. Your Honor, Mr. Benedict is on a fishing expedition and he's back to his habit of insinuation. On the contrary, I am building to a very specific point. I'll allow the question, objection overruled. Did you ever ask the defendant specifically if he and Miss Stewart were more than friends, more than just co-workers? Yeah, once or twice. And what did he tell you? He denied it straight out. And you believed him? Objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. I must warn the prosecutor that I have allowed considerable leeway in pursuing this line of questioning. Strike that last question from the record and the jury will please disregard. No further questions, Your Honor. Very well. You're excused. You step down. I'd like to request a short recess at this time. No, no, no. Go ahead. Talk about Barbara Ryan Originals. I'll just sit out here and read a magazine. Mm. Ellie. How is it that you and Brock have become such good friends after all of the negative things you said about him? Well, Emily, we've had to bury the past and become friends. Because of you, really. He loves you very much, otherwise he wouldn't be going through this divorce. Well, I just hope he doesn't have to give up his business. I know how much of his life he put into oh, it. Oh, no, yes, he does have to give up his business. Now, why would you say that? I mean, how would you know that? All I'm saying to you is that he just needs a lot of support from you right now. All right, that's great. We can just go over specifics on that later on this afternoon. Right. Hey, 
You want to ride to Walsh Towers? That that would be great. Let's go. Talk to you later. Why don't you steal a few Simply Barber secrets while there, huh? Yeah, I think You'll I'll You'll never know it. my secrets, baby. <laughs> oh, I already know a few of hers already, baby. Oh, oh. So, how are you doing? I'm okay. I just wish I knew what was going on at the courthouse. Nah, Brock's right. It's better if you stayed here. Paul, Mr. Lombard wants to see you. What does he want? All right, um, send him in. Thanks. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Okay. What brings you here? Well, I've got a message from Emily. Um, she wanted to bring it by herself, but she thought it would be better if I did. I was just about to call her. She, uh, really wants to be here, Paul. She's very concerned that you don't understand why it's best that she's not. Yeah, I know. She told me all about that last night. Good. You know, she really cares about you. No, I mean that. I can't even begin to tell you how worried she is right now. She won't even sit down. <laughs> or how many times she and I end up talking about you and how she wants to be certain that you're going to be a part of our lives. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Come on, don't doubt that. Listen, through this all, you got to remember, she did perjure herself on the stand for you. People don't do things like that unless they care a hell of a lot. Now listen, I'm going out of town for a couple days. I would uh, really appreciate it if you'd keep an eye on Emily while I was gone, okay? Sure. Thanks. Hang in there. <coughs> Wait a minute. How do you know she perjured herself? We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Oh, I didn't mean she perjured herself. I meant that... You know, don't you? The only way that you can know she's lying is to know the truth she's lying about. Will you sit down and listen? No, I won't. She told you about us, didn't she? About my letters. Put your voice down. No! I want to know the truth. For once in my life, damn it, I want somebody to tell me the truth. You know, I've had the feeling for weeks now that you knew. Like last night when you told me you think it's better off if Emily didn't see me under the circumstances. It's because she's been lying to me. You know, don't you? You quit blaming Emily and try to understand what the what? hell is going what on. What the hell is there to understand? She lied to me like everybody has my whole entire life. I killed my own father to save her life and she turns around and lies to me? Sit down, kid. No, I won't. I want to tell you. Good. So you act like an adult. Just stand there and listen. Okay. You want the truth? You got it. Yeah. She told me. Everything? What exactly did she tell you, Brock? She told me that you two spent the night together. She told me about your love letters. She told me that your father read them. That's why he attacked her. She told me that you burned them in the sink before you called the police. I knew she was hiding something, Paul. I cornered her on it. She tried to explain her way out. I wouldn't let go. She had to tell me because she loves me. We love each other, and you know that. You also know that we are planning to be married. Now, what you two had was a single, one-night stand, and it's time you understood that. I understand. I understand that she told me that that was our secret. It is your secret, Paul, and it's gonna hurt you both a hell of a lot of And that's supposed to make up for the lies, what huh? What do you want? She lied for you on the stand. And I've been sweating out in this courtroom every day. Keeping our secret while she's out there breaking hers to me. She told me because she loves me, Paul. She and I are planning a life together. Look, I don't want to hear about it, Brock. Yeah, I may be 19 years old, but that does not make me stupid. And you let Emily know that, too. I think it's... 
Rock, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I need to talk to Paul. Sure, sure. Um, Paul, think about everything I said. Um, everything. Bye. Bye. What was that all about? Nothing. Okay, then, uh... Then why don't I bring you up to date on, on exactly where we stand? It doesn't look good, right? Well, I, I wouldn't say that, uh, but Benedict has managed to raise more doubts in the jurors' minds about your relationship with Emily. So? Paul, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Jess. As a matter of fact, I think I just grew up a lot. Let's go. What's next? Where do we go from here? Well, um, I have a call in for another witness, but he may not make it. And, uh, unless I call for a special adjournment, so I may just have to race, rest the case now with Andy's testimony. Which wasn't good. <laughs> well, it didn't help, but... I don't know, I'd just really rather not have that be the last thing in the jurors' minds. Put me on the stand, Jess. Paul... No, put me on the stand. I want to testify. Once and for all, I want to set this record straight. Daisy kept putting me off, saying my family would never approve. I knew that in my heart, but I loved her more than I ever thought possible. So I pursued her endlessly, relentlessly, until finally she was too weak to resist and consented to be my wife. Well, I've heard of similar cases. You've told us a great deal about how you fell in love with the maid on your family's estate in southern England and all of that, but it still doesn't explain why you stole a brooch that belongs to my wife. Duncan, I'm sure he's getting to that. Now, go on. Would you mind terribly if I asked Daisy to join us here? Oh. You know where she is? I thought she ran away and broke your heart. She's downstairs in the lobby. Oh, my dear boy, you should have brought her up in the first place. What, what, what's her last name? Washbourne. Okay. Operator, yes. Um, please page a woman named Daisy Washbourne. She's in the lobby. Yes. No, 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 no. Washbourne. Yes. Tell her to come up to room 207. Thank you. Well, I suppose she'll come up here and she can explain why you've spun this wonderful tale you've been telling us. After she agreed to marry me, I gave her my great-great-grandmother's jeweled brooch to seal the engagement. Oh. I thought a ring was customary. We were going to pick one out after I'd told my family. So, how did you find her? When I saw the brooch yesterday, I knew she could only have sold it if she was in great need. And so my only recourse was to find the jeweler to whom she'd sold it. Oh. That's why I borrowed the brooch. I don't think borrowed is the appropriate word here. The box had the name of the jeweler on it. I found his shop, and he knew where poor Daisy was living. If she sold the brooch for half of what I paid for it, I don't think we can still call her poor Daisy. He gave her the equivalent of 50 quid. Bloody hell, I've been robbed twice in 24 hours. Uh, just... Oh, yeah. Daisy, Washburn? Yes, ma'am. Come in. Come in. My name is Shannon O'Hara... Uh, Shannon McKechnie, and this is my husband, Duncan. He is not as gruff as he looks. And this gentleman, it looks like you know. <laughs> um, listen, let me take your coat. Unless he's been telling us all about your very romantic story, and I can't wait to hear the ending. When my family found out about us, they were furious, weren't they? Yes, indeed. They let me go at once. Unless his father told me I would be apprehended if I was ever seen in the village again. He had me taken to the train station. After telling her, I had agreed to travel for a year. But you didn't do that? No. No, and, and then, but how did you get to Venice? I had once worked for a lady who holidayed here, and I thought perhaps I could get my old job back. But she had left for Egypt, and as I had no money left, I was desperate. So you sold the brooch. Even though parting with it broke my heart. But when I found her this morning, I told her, I don't care what my family thinks. I love you, and I'm going to marry you. We even secured the marriage license before coming here. <laughs> well, listen, this is all very well and nice, but it still doesn't change the fact that that brooch belongs to my wife. Duncan, can't we help them find some of the happiness we found? Now, look at them. <sighs> <laughs> well, if this is a scam, I... 
Suppose I can be taken in. But what else are they going to find? Happiness. They have no money, no place to go. Oh, Duncan, you're a genius. Oh. What did I say? <gasps> Greg, you looking forward to Florida? I'm going to build a sandcastle. Good for you. Where are you staying? Brock said he rented a house in the Palm Beach area. First class. We Lombards always travel first class, don't we, Greg? I'm sorry that we're going to miss the family Thanksgiving, but I really am looking forward to having some time alone with Brock and the kids. Greg, mm -hmm. you better get upstairs and start packing. Do I have to, Mom? Yeah, you do. Come on, now give your grandfather a kiss and go on. <sighs> going to miss you, Carl. <laughs> and tell Denise to pick out what she wants to take, okay? Ah, he reminds me of Brock when Brock was that age. He's handsome, respectful, and loving. He still is, Philip. It's a difficult time for him. Hard for you, too, huh? Believe me, once he gets the Stewart woman out of his system, he'll be a better husband and son. Where's my suitcase, Mama? Just a second, and I'll get it. No, by all means, go. I'll have some coffee. You go ahead and pack, and uh, I'll drive you to O'Hare and see you off. It's not necessary, Philip. There's very little time between Brock's flight in and our connecting flight to Miami. I thought you said Palm Beach. I, I did. We're going to drive to Palm Beach. Uh, Lloyd, it's Philip. There's definitely something strange going on here. Uh, just hang loose until the house is empty. Then I want you over here to get started on our plan. I really blew it, didn't I? Oh, come on, you did fine. I didn't know what to... I didn't know what to say when Benedict kept asking me all those questions about Emily and Paul. You did exactly right. You told him everything as honestly as you possibly could. He keeps beating up on himself. Nothing I say or do helps. You, now, listen to me. You help by just being there. Uh, Margo. Yes? Help me talk Dan into taking a vacation after the holidays. Hey, don't start turning my employees against me. Employee? That's all I am to you? <laughs> In front of my wife? <laughs> you really did a very good job. Uh, where's Dad? I thought he'd be with you today. Here. Uh, he's covering for John. For John? Yeah, well, he took a little time off. I, I thought you knew. He did. He didn't tell me. Uh, well, I think it was just kind of spur of the moment. Actually, it's right after he testified. Alone or with Lucinda? Son, I, uh, your father seemed to feel he needed to have some time to himself so he could think. According to Susan, he's uh, considering filing for divorce. Thank you, that really helped. Look at her, she's just standing there like an old witch keeping her vigil. Just ignore her, hon, just ignore her. Paul insists on taking the stand. What? What? You can't let him do it's that, It's his right, no. Barbara, and I can't talk him out of it. I really need Hank. Okay, all right, I'll try to call him again. First, I want to talk to Paul. You know, honey, I may be wrong, but I've got a feeling Paul's going to be his own best witness. Court is about to resume. I better call Hank. Okay. What's up? Paul's going to testify. What? I thought Jessica was dead set against no, that. No, she was, but apparently he insists. Let's go inside. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Just so you know. It's my client's decision. She's not happy about it, but because the kids just answered all my prayers. Right. It's very important that I speak to Mr. Elliot immediately. He is visiting a patient there, Mr. Charles Clayton. Yes, I'll hold. So, my grandson is taking the stand today. It's not your grandson. Don't call him that. But that's what he is, James's son. It's something all your lies can never change. And now you'll find out what it's like to lose a son. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated. Please state your name for the court. Paul Stenbeck. Paul, you've never denied firing the shots that resulted in the death of your father. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. Would you please explain to the jury your relationship with your father over the years? Well, 
I... I loved and respected my father when I was a kid, just as every kid wants to. Hi. Hi. What's wrong? I went by to give Paul your message. And it slipped out. What slipped out, Brock? Did I know about the nights you spent together and about the letters? No, please, please. I'm sorry, baby. Don't get upset, please. I talked to him. He's never going to tell anybody, okay? It was the summer that I spent up at the Stewart Cabin that I first caught a glimpse of what my father was really like. And it was that same summer that I got to know Emily Stewart. And I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh. oh, congratulations. <laughs> I hope you'll always be as happy as you are right now. Hi, right, congratulations. <laughs> And you, thank you for coming on such short notice. I'm very glad to be part of this happy <laughs> occasion. <laughs> Duncan Pay, the minister. Oh! Hi. I can't believe uh, how swiftly you arranged well, all this. Um, well, I had a good teacher. Thank you. <laughs> we'll never forget you, Mrs. McKinney. Oh, no, don't take that off. No, that's part of our wedding gift to you. I must. I couldn't. Oh, yes, you must. <laughs> Let me pay you back. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't hear of it. You have given Duncan and me the most romantic finale to the most wonderful honeymoon we've ever had and ever will have. And that's uh, part of our gift. And the other part of our gift is this honeymoon suite. It's paid for through the weekend. <laughs> I, and there's a, a small reception waiting for you down in the bar where we first met Leslie. <laughs> How can we ever thank you? Uh, well, your happiness is thanks enough. But if you will let my bride and I alone for a bit, we'll join you shortly. Of course. Congratulations. <laughs> you were so happy. You're a wonder. Oh, my goodness. So are you. <laughs> and a man who is more romantic than he wants to admit. Now, are you sure you'll be able to forget all of this high adventure of the last 24 hours and settle down to a boring life in good old Oakdale? Oh, you vowed that my life would be one long extended adventure. And now, Lassie, here's a promise that I will keep. <laughs> Come on, Ann. Sure. Just came by because I wanted to celebrate because this is it. It's really going to happen. I feel like a kid. <laughs> we're going to meet Marjorie and the kids at O'Hare in an hour and a half, and we're going to do it. Well, I want the best for you, and I wish you the best of luck with this divorce, Brock. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you do me a favor later? Sure. Emily was kind of upset when I said goodbye to her, so if you could call Craig and kind of check, see how she's doing, I'd appreciate it. Is she upset about you leaving? Um, yeah, but really about the court case. I would put off going, but I just... God, I can't stand living like this anymore, so... Do that for me? Yes. Okay, thanks. You have changed so much. <laughs> yeah. I've even changed enough to want the best for you. You better go. You're going to miss that plane. Yeah. I know. I know. Thank you. I had seen my dad kill Glenn Harrington and try to kill a good friend of mine, Hank Elliott. So I knew that if I didn't stop him, he would have killed Emily. So you yelled for him to stop. Right. But he wouldn't. And he was strangling her and... And that's when you fired the gun? Yes. Thank you, Paul. You've been on the stand a long time, and I know it's been very painful for you. I'm just glad that I had a chance to finally tell the truth. 
No further questions. Uh, Mr. Benedict, do you wish to cross-examine? Indeed. Whore! Hi, I'm Emily Stewart. I'm one of the witnesses. I need to go inside, please. Now, Mr. Stendek, we've all heard your lengthy testimony about what kind of man your father was. Were you shocked when you found him attacking Miss Stewart? Oh, of course I was. I, I didn't even think he was in the country, and I never wanted to see him again. I'd like to go back that, to earlier that night, if I may. Uh, you had ended your summer job. You were going to Miss Stewart's for dinner that night. You had bought her some roses. Uh, you had dismissed the officer who was assigned to protect you. Is that correct? Yes. Why did you dismiss Officer Hanson? Because I didn't feel that I needed protection. And I was going to be spending the night at my aunt's house anyway. I show you People's Exhibit C. Is this the note you sent with the roses that night? Yes. Well, would you please read it to the court? Dear Emily, I'm looking forward to dinner with you tonight, but I'm not looking forward to the end of our working together. I've told you many times how you've changed my life, and I want you to know that starting tonight, I promise you'll never have to worry about my father hurting you again. I love you, Paul. What did you mean when you wrote... I promise you'll never have to worry about my father hurting you again. I meant that I'd protect her. What did you mean when you said, I love you, Paul? Exactly that. I loved her. And did your love for Ms. Stewart ever embrace the sexual act between you? Objection! Your Honor, I am still searching for the passions that fueled the events the night in Emily Stewart's bedroom, the night James Stenbeck was shot. I'll allow the question objection over rules. The witness will answer. Yes, it did. Stay tuned for Guiding Light, next on most of these CBS stations. Fashions by Regina Porter. This is Dan Regent inviting you to join us again Monday for As the World Turns. This is CBS.